our attention to something completely different. The Women and Equalities Committee today is hearing from social media companies about body image. That, as a new health survey by the NHS, has found that a fifth of women, they believe, may have an eating disorder. A fifth. Gemma Oten is manager and patron of SEED. They're an eating disorder support service and joins us now. Good morning to you, Gemma. Good morning. Um, we hear so much about social media and eating disorders and the encouragement of, you know, thinspiration websites, encouraging anorexia, bulimia and the like, giving almost sort of passing on tips. But also the, the social media images that a lot of young uh, teenage and uh, 20s girls see and boys now as well, telling them how thin they should be and what and distorting their idea of what is and is not a healthy body. Um, do you really think it's so prevalent though, that we're looking at a fifth of women with an eating disorder? I think um, there are two separate things. The social media side is, is one thing, but the, the rise in eating disorders is, is another. Um, I think it's got to be understood that eating disorders are a mental health illness. And by looking at an image that doesn't um, provoke or trigger um, the eating disorder, the eating disorder is fundamentally already there because it's a way of control. Um, unfortunately, the statistics that have come out recently are not shocking to me. Um, we have seen over the last 20 years significant increases year on year just this last year alone and of course it's impacted by lockdown but we've seen a 32 percent increase in new referrals to seed 42.5 percent of those in, um, increased in referrals are 10 to 19 year olds which is just so scary oh terrifying um, yeah it, it really is and and we've got to remember as well um you know it, it's got the highest mortality rate of any other mental health illness one in five of those will die as a direct result of eating disorder or by taking their own life. Now, I think more needs to be done and I'm hoping that this survey will not just highlight and get people talking, it will actually get people doing and people being the government. Yeah, I mean, this this is a, the the real the real concern, isn't it? That actually, this is very prevalent. Is it the case that more people are coming forward, and that's a good thing because people are talking about it more openly. It's not something that's a source of of of, of shame. Well, I mean, it says I think for a lot of these women and and men, it is actually they feel it's a source of shame, but it shouldn't be. It is a mental health issue, and there should be no shame in that. Um, but I, I suppose as a mum, one of the things I'm often concerned about is that. We talk so much about these things. We almost sort of plant the ideas into young people's heads that this is something that a lot of people do. And they might, perhaps might not have thought about it until they were told about it. Well, no, I, I disagree. I think education is, is key. Um, I, I don't think that by talking about eating disorders, we're causing any form of trigger. By talking about eating disorders, we're allowing people to understand that they shouldn't feel ashamed, they shouldn't feel scared and they shouldn't feel alone. Early intervention and prevention is key when it comes to eating disorders. And interestingly, also, I'm glad that it's been highlighted that the majority of those um, seem to be preventing eating, um, sorry, presenting eating disorders are actually uh, deemed as obese, yeah. which completely goes against the whole government narrative about obesity at the moment. It's completely wrong. You don't have to be a certain weight or number on the scales to have an eating disorder. Yeah. It's a mental health illness and more needs to be done and more needs to be shown in terms of compassion, but also actively changing the narrative. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the it, it is extraordinary to me um, how many women are really shocked by their daughters uh, getting obsessed this when they spend a lot of time standing in front of the mirror saying how fat they are and criticise themselves and women seeming to think that, I mean, certainly from the images you see on lots of websites and social media, that the only value they have is is their bodies, their faces, is what their weight is. And this obsession with body image and having a perfect Instagram image uh, is, uh, is, is so crucial to so many, particularly younger people. And, and you know, we, look, we all want to look our best to try and keep in shape, you know, eat healthy and sort of make sure you know you haven't got a roll of fat around the middle certainly when a covid is about and it affects people with obesity more it seems to me to only make sense but but there's a difficult balance to strike between sort of being aware of being healthy and being a healthy weight and that not moving into something where it's controlling your life i think um in, in terms of social media there definitely is a duty of care that that all of these platforms need to take into account there's been so many um, unhelpful um, and scary and dangerous uh, advertisements of late around fasting apps and, and I totally think that they they don't cause an eating disorder but they definitely don't help. Um, one thing that again we've, we've always got to remember around this is that yes it might seem like people are looking for the for the body perfect image but it's all up here especially with the impact of lockdown 
you know, you've got to remember there are so many people out there who have no idea what the next year is going to bring. And I know we're talking about a survey that has been conducted in comparison from 2007, but we are here and we are now and the world is changing. And lockdown has severely impacted mental health, but it's also severely impacted those with eating disorders. Yeah, absolutely. People don't have any control over what their what their futures are and and one of the things that we always say at seed is we treat the person not the eating disorder and that means it's the fundamental foundations of what is going on for them in their life and a lot of people see um a, a way of of control by using that food as the the symptom but it's not the cause exactly as you say treating the person not not the actual disorder Gemma Roten really appreciate you joining us uh, she's manager and patron of seed eating disorder and support services thank you for that 9 47 is the time i'm next going to talk about 